Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to make some basically donuts that go on the stub shafts for my conveyor rollers I build. And for the most part, the ones I make are three inch with an inch and a quarter bore. I need to make some four inch ones today with an inch and a quarter bore. So we're gonna start with solid stock, but we're gonna go ahead and use one of the tools that I started using years ago and I absolutely love. So these are the tools, these are a spade drill. And what they are is a tool holder with a replaceable cutting insert. Now this one's pretty war, but uh, when I started playing with these, I bought the first one and it was this one. And I started, was using it on the radial drill. I had a part that was 18 inch diameter, seven and a half inch thick. And we had to reduce the weight on it as such to, um, it flew over to Hawaii and then it went on a smaller plane and went to one of the outlying islands. So I have a part in Hawaii, which is really cool. I have parts in South America, I have parts in Japan, I have parts all over the world, it's really cool. But this is the tool that got that job done. We had like 80 holes or something like that. It was some weird thing, but it looked like Swiss cheese when I was done. But I went from an 800 and some odd pound part down to a 200 pound part, which was really good. Um, then I started put, getting these for the turret lathe. Um, and that one over there. And that was when I had the, I have the flood coolant on the turret lay, they work awesome for roughing. I was doing all the roughing and then I do the finish bore in the Monarch. And then these I bought, I use in the radial drill as well with the spiral flute. Um, and they come in all sizes and shapes. Um, a friend of mine offered me one that would do a four and a quarter inch insert. Um, and I'm probably gonna take it one of these days cause I do get into that big stuff. Now today's job is to make these, but I need a four inch diameter. Now, last time I ran the, these parts, I couldn't get this tubing in the three inch diameter, so I bought this one with the inch and a quarter insert, and I would drill as deep as I could, and then take them over to the bandsaw and cut them off an inch and a half long. So let's go ahead and throw the material up in the lathe and start drilling. So let's get the lathe started up. I'm running at 710 RPM just to do the center drill and then we'll slow it down to start the spade. So one complaint I had about the Lion when I got it was the coolant hose, the flexible hose was out of here and it, you couldn't reach half the time on this big stuff. So I bought some stainless steel pipe and just extended it over to get it to where it was usable. But then I added this valve here and a push to connect um, for a quarter inch nylon, um, basically air hose. And what I use that for is to connect to my spade drill for flood, you know, feeding the coolant. So that's something I really like, so let's get that hooked up. Now the manual says to use a a shorter drill to start with but I was being cheap when I did this and I'm not looking for a perfect bore as far as where it comes out so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna start out slower I'm gonna start at 125 rpm for my um, first till the drills get started and then we'll go ahead and speed it up um, quite a bit so I'll go ahead and turn the coolant pump whoop that was the light we'll turn the coolant pump on get that coolant coming through. And I'm just gonna start with a little bit right away to just get moving. 
so I don't make a huge mess. And let's see how she does. And you can see that vibration in there. And that's where a shorter drill would definitely be good. All right, I better grab that. More jobs, more jobs. I tell you, every time that phone rings. Nothing wrong with that, though. Yeah, once we get in a little ways, that vibration will subside. And then we can just plow. And there we go. I think we got through the center drill. All right, she's cutting good. And we'll go ahead and uh, shift her up to a higher gear. So I'm trying to remember what I ran last time. And I think it was this. 335 so we'll we'll go ahead and we'll start there and we can ramp it up from there if we have to oh yeah throw coolant everywhere there we go and we'll open up our coolant a little more And I know it looks like I'm really cranking here, but I'm in low gear. But it's still, it's still cooking. And I'm out of travel of my quill here, so we'll go ahead and run it all the way back and slide her in. again. These speed drills really are cool. I mean, they, I've been using them for quite a few years now and they really hog the material. We could try speeding it up to the 500 here. All right, let's see what that does for us. Oh, beautiful. Definitely throwing coolant everywhere, though. So one of the coolest things I've discovered with these spade drills is just how close they actually drill to size. This is inch and a quarter, cold rolled round, and from experience, this has been pretty good. And I don't think I have a burr on it, but Get it lined up and it'll it'll go. And it's a snug fit, so that's really nice. That's perfect for this application. 
So now that we've lightened it up quite a bit, let's go ahead and take it out, throw it in our Johnson, and uh, cut off the pieces I need. Oh, much lighter. There's our first pieces off of the, the full depth of cut. Um, we got seven chunks out of there, inch and a half long. And that is not deep enough to get another piece out of, so we'll go ahead and throw it back up in the lathe and keep on drilling. Well, that was actually only about uh, four minutes to drill that full length of that drill, um, 12 inches roughly. Um, pretty awesome, I, I'd say. I really do like these spade drills. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep going on this job and get this thing done. And uh, until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time. <laughs>